think people know the term STEM, science, technology, engineering, math. Okay, so STEAM, STEM plus art. Uh, uh, this was, uh, we were one of the really early ones to be championing this term. At the time we were talking about it, it was really just John Maida at RISD. Uh, but we really thought that was awesome because here we were, a bunch of nerds, right, STEM trained people. Uh, but, but, you know, the sort of public sentiment, right, is it's not cool to be a nerd. It's not fun to be a nerd. But we got to play with lasers and fire and robots all the time. We were building huge attractions and building games. Like, this is a lot closer to being a DJ or a basketball player than, you know, being, uh, 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 you know, something that, that is, is less exciting. Um, so, we, so we put it all over the place. It got a quarter billion media impressions, which was just nuts. We were on Discovery Channel and Time Magazine and on stage at All Things Digital with Walt Mossberg and Kara Swisher swinging a carnival hammer. Uh, so really ridiculous. Uh, sold out 5,000 people a day. And in fact, it was two years ago today, we brought it to San Francisco. Uh, two years ago, roughly around now. Um, and uh, we had this moment where, so we'd done it in LA. We'd done it in San Francisco, sold out you know, thousands and thousands of people a day, crazy, a core, you know, 120,000 square feet. So just for context, that's like two football fields of content. Uh, and we left San Francisco like, oh my gosh, people totally love that and we're gonna die if we do this again. Like, we took a year to raise all the sponsorship, right? We raised a million and a half dollars in sponsorship, uh, you know, a year to plan it, 10 days to set it up. And we operated it for a weekend, right? Three days to set up 120,000 square feet. Are we masochists? Uh, so it was really a struggle to sort of get home and be like, God, there's something that people like here, and this is not a business. Like, this is not going to work. There's got to be another way for this to live. Uh, and so what we ended up doing was uh, we launched a nonprofit. Uh, we'd been talking for a long time about a, a nonprofit, and, and it's hard to talk about for profit and education. The world sort of gives you a hard time about that. Uh, and so we had been working with a nonprofit in Los Angeles for a long time that we really liked. They were frustrated with their brand and, and, and uh, uh, really loved the time we had worked together at the, um, uh, on the carnival. And so we basically open sourced our carnival, uh, mer you know, took our, the whole tra teacher training we built and merged it with, with, with their program. Uh, and we now have the Two-Bit Circus Foundation. Uh, it's a, t uh, a team of 10, big warehouse in Gardena. We have another wa warehouse in Fresno. Uh, and it's basically a full stack replacement for the science fair and the bake sale. Kids build their own games. They learn steam building their own games. And then they learn business throwing their own carnival. The carnival raises money for the school. Uh, and you know, it's more exciting than a science fair. The community can come and play and engage. Uh, so sort of everybody wins. Uh, it's a four part, five part system. Um, uh, we do the teacher professional development. We teach the teachers. Uh, we do all the consumable classroom materials. We basically aggregate clean waste from companies, package it up as, as art supplies for kids. So a bottling company buys too many bottle caps. They're clean on the loading dock and they're gonna throw them away. Instead, they give them to us. We then package that with some extra cardboard and some other stuff and all of a sudden you have a kit that we sell to the school. Uh, uh, we deploy maker spaces, steam labs. So now they've got the consumable materials, they've got the permanent materials, and then we have the whole tool set on how to build their own games. Uh, so the, the community then throws the carnival. As a company, as a for-profit, we threw two carnivals. We have done, the, not, the foundation's done six. We've got licensing deals with Australia. We're about to, we were in talks with Dubai and Lebanon and Hong Kong. We're we're, the next one happens in literally a month in, in, uh, in Dallas. Uh, so really exciting. It's going fast as hell. We finally sort of got it into the right format. Uh, and, and, and it's really taking off. So uh, the other piece was we were like, okay, well now that that's dialed, what are we gonna do around the, the corporate? What's the next step for corporate, right? We, the consulting stuff was nice, but we still wanted our own thing. Um, what's the format that will work? Uh, so we're getting ready to open an amusement park. <laughs> uh, we call it a micro amusement park. Uh, because it's small for an amusement park, but huge for a retail complex. It's half a city block, 50,000 square feet. Uh, so um, it is uh, it's called Two-Bit Circus, uh, and it is an immersive social play space. Uh, this is something that, uh, you know, is, uh, again, out-of-home entertainment hasn't changed in a long time, right? It's well, the last innovation, frankly, is escape rooms. And, you know, in, in LA, there was zero escape rooms a few years ago. There's over 100 now. So if that's not sort of demonstration, there's new appetite for immersive entertainment, I don't, I don't know what is. Uh, but before that, it was like laser tag, you know? I don't know what the other thing was that was awesome and new. Um, and, and we really, you know, it's funny to use this word uh, 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 up in Silicon Valley, but it's a platform. <laughs> uh, and, and if you think about out-of-home entertainment, there's a lot of things that are platforms, and there's a lot of things that are interactive, but not both. So, so something that is interactive, right? Bowling, mini golf, escape rooms, really interactive, not a platform, right? It's the same every time. Things that are platforms, 
movie theaters, uh, uh, concert venues, right? Super awesome platform. You can change the content. You invest in theater, you know, in projectors and, 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 and bathrooms and whatnot. Change the content, right? And, 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 and as a result, your demographic changes. So, so uh, uh, and, and we value novelty in our entertainment, right? So the movie industry, hell of a lot bigger than the, the uh, uh, mini golf industry. Um, our first location is in the middle of downtown LA, the Arts District in downtown. Um, we actually just got our permits last week. We started demolition this week. I mean, oh my God. We literally signed the freaking lease. This is how frustrating it can be to do stuff like this. We signed the lease on this like eight months ago. We've had an empty 50,000 square foot building in the middle of downtown LA that we could do nothing with. I mean, that was so frustrating. Uh, so at any rate, and it's so funny, it's like they knew the circus was coming. The building already had this like weird ass paint job. Uh, but uh, so right in the middle of downtown, we did a whole analysis. There's like five billion dollars of, of investment going in around there from uh, a new campus for, for Warner Music and a Soho House, all kinds of stuff. Um, and uh, we've got a whole bunch of, 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 of fun stuff planned for it. Uh, some, some early conceptual renderings um, and uh, we, you know, there's, this is a, a, a rough layout. We have an interactive supper club. We have what we call story rooms, which are, uh, uh, you know, basically an escape room is like always the same, uh, uh, you know, the same format. What, and, and frankly, what happens if the story is not about escaping the room and you want to do something for Barbie, right? Or NASCAR or, you know, physics. So there's lots of different ways in which you can do uh, th this kind of immersive entertainment. We call them story rooms. Uh, this is a, a, a one, one example. We built this starship. Uh, you're all on the bridge of a starship and then you have to collaborate to solve all kinds of different uh, uh, puzzles, explore the galaxy and, and whatnot. Uh, we'll definitely have a, a, a bunch of virtual reality in there, different varieties. Um, a, a whole reimagined Carnival Midway. Uh, uh, when we think about this, Carnival Midway is right there, social, uh, um, uh, you know, this, this, this sort of format. Uh, but we've really reimagined a lot of that with different technology, um, uh, computer vision, uh, um, whatnot. Uh, reimagined arcade uh, with a whole bunch of different toys. Uh, we've had a lot of fun with food and beverage, um, we, including a robot bartender. Um, so uh, yeah, we're going to be open early next year. So we're, we're very excited about that. Uh, we've we've en ended up landing an incredible woman from the amusement park industry that's basically a freaking celebrity. Uh, how many have heard of Great Wolf Lodge? You know that name? Yeah? OK. So the CEO of Great Wolf left to do this with us. Uh, so she was a client of ours. What's that? Yeah. No, we won't probably, it's interesting. We have experimented with food and virtual reality. It's, it's actually not that awesome yet. There's definitely places that are doing that well. There's a place in uh, whoa, Shanghai called um, Oblivion, I think, um, that's supposed to do a really cool VR thing, um, VR and food. I've tried a couple of VR food things. I don't think that it's, it's not quite there yet. The food and the VR will be separate. <laughs> there will be food, there will be VR, not necessarily at the same time. Um, okay, so. Sorry to talk your ear off, uh, but that sort of like brings us to current. I've got like some stuff around sort of like some of our process and things that I could share. Uh, um, time-wise, how are we doing? Um, we got some time? Yeah? 